Do you like selling ice cream? I do. Yeah. I like eating ice cream too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, come on in here and get you some ice cream. Donnie Bentley here from Loudon. I live down here and I got Mackenzie. This is one of my 15 grandchildren. She comes out and does stuff like this with me. She's uh, going to college, so you know we always, I don't give them money, I make them work for it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, I'm glad you stopped by our booth. You know, I've got my new toy out here. This is what uh, Santa Claus brought me is uh, an ice cream machine. It's got a 1934 John Deere engine on it. Uh, hit and miss engine. Makes two tubs of ice cream and I blew a clutch up today so I'm making one tub of ice cream at a time right now. But uh, I'm glad y'all stopped by. Do you want to see it real quick? Look at it yeah, real quick. Yeah, look at it. Talk to us. You know, like I said, it's got a, it's a 1934 John Deere and it uh, hit and miss engine and it runs and it's put driving the ice cream machine and we make homemade ice cream. You know, home, homemade ice cream is uh, its own food group. You know, ice cream's uh, my favorite food group anyway, but uh, <laughs> we just come out to this trade show. This is actually my first one out. Uh, like I said, Santa Claus brought me this this year, so it's, it's my first year out uh, doing ice cream. We made two tubs and sold out as quick as we could get them and got another one making. Well, you, uh, and you also do something else for a living. You, got, you do home inspection. Oh, yeah, we own a home inspection company. Bentley Home Inspection, we're uh, probably the biggest home inspection company around. We've been doing it for 26 years. And you, you have a Facebook page? Oh, know. absolutely. BentleyHomeInspection.com. Uh, you work out of what area? We cover East Tennessee. East but, Tennessee. Uh, we, uh, the office is in Loudoun, but uh, we got inspectors. We have 16 guys that work for us. Okay. Well, and then right. we got a, a, another crew, and we do do everything. Well, how about that? That's quite a few people out inspecting homes. It is. There's a lot of houses for sale. Oh, uh, well, how many horsepower would a motor like this be? That, that's a three horsepower. A three horsepower. Yep. So when you, when you got this for Christmas, everything was set up just like this, ready to go? Pretty much, yeah. That's come out of Amish country. Yeah. How, uh, how'd you find it for sale? Well, I found some, and then my wife uh, took it upon herself to order me one. Yeah. Okay, so you didn't know? I didn't know. She did the, the whole thing, huh? She did the whole thing. How about that? You got a good wife, don't you? I do. <laughs> What's your wife's name? Susan, I don't see her. I would introduce you, but I don't see her. She's out and about shopping, spending some of my ice cream. Absolutely. Money you Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, good talking to you. Thanks for your time, and we maybe see you at another show. Good deal. Thank you. Thank you. So, what's your name? I'm George Hackler. Where are you from, George? Uh, Herman, Tennessee. Herman. How long have you been coming to these shows and collecting motors? Oh, a long time. I, I went to the museum for about 36 years. Yeah. So, uh, what do you got here today that you got on display? This is a 1912 Sparta Economy. 1912. Yeah, it was a four horsepower. Four horsepower. <clears throat> Sold by Sears and Roebuck. It cost you... Seventy-six dollars and ninety-five cents new. Uh-huh. That's that's a pretty big. Is that is that a pretty good size machine for the farm? I mean, that that's looks a, a little bigger than most of us. That's a four horse. Four. It, it was designed, you know, you build it to whatever you was wanting to run. Right. You know, whether you're grinding corn or pumping water or, or just a stationary engine back end. You would have been on a cart similar to this, and you'd had a belt went to whatever you was wanting to run it on. Unless you got it on some kind of cart here that probably didn't come with that. That's something maybe no, bought extra. Yeah, it's just home. It's, it's a homemade cart. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was going to quit there for a minute. So why, why do they call them hit and miss motors? This is a hit and miss motor? It's hit and miss. It, it only fires enough to keep it running. If you put a load on it, it'll fire much faster. Okay. It would, it would sound like this here if you put a load on it. It tries to maintain them RPM. Okay. And the, the more you strain it, the more it tries to do that. Of course, it's not loaded. That's why it speeds it up. So we uh, we was eating lunch over a little while ago, and we saw you driving by, and you you walk yeah. behind tractor. You're gonna show that to us? Yeah, sure. If it'll start. 
Sometimes it starts great, sometimes it don't start. First thing you want to make sure somebody ain't putting gear. Now my first question is, where does the gasoline go at? Right here. Down there, gas. Yeah. It's gas and oil mix. Gas and oil mix. It's two cycle. It uses gas and 30 weight oil. So you just, this is a new purchase, you just bought this recently. Yeah, I bought this about three weeks ago, I guess. You could have demonstrated for us out there. Yeah, we don't quit, huh? It, the more you strain it, the more it'll try to fire. Okay. It may quit, too. So that's interesting. So that would have been different uh, things you could put behind yeah, it. Yeah, they, they was primarily used for, for like color rating. There, there's not a lot of horsepower there. Yeah. Well. And this in here is a. Is this yours too? Yeah. This oh. was the beast. If see if we can start this, Scott. We'll try it without it first. Give her a twist, sir, and see. It made the first try, Scott. That's scary. You gotta put the, you gotta put the anchor up. Go for it. Put the anchor out there. I was on it when I got it. It'll quit here in a minute. Now, this is the one that's got all the different your models of parts. Yes. So tell us about what it's made up here of. This is a motor off of, it's a new way engine off of a Centaur tractor. The engine would have come off a 1925 model tractor. The front end is a 1910 Ford Model T. The the drive here is a Shaw do all conversion that they made that you can convert your Model T into a tractor. Also, it's a conversion made to take a buy. And this rear end is out of a 1917 Model T. 
Yeah. And Elmer first found it in 1961 in what is now Target on Callahan Drive. It was outside of a hog lot. And it's um, kind of a fra Frankenstein, I guess. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> Got my, different parts of people. A lot of different parts. So this is something somebody just maybe created back in the 20s or 30s or 40s, yeah, it's maybe. Just, and and it's pretty much similar to that when Elmer found it. Yeah, not been and, changed none, huh? Looks we, like it's got a new carburetor, maybe. I stuck that on there. I've got the original one that came yeah. on it. We got to do some work on it because it wouldn't run with it. Right. I stuck it on there. And about 15 years ago, Bob put the magneto on it because the one who's on it quit, which is on the other side there. Yeah. And, of course, this is, this is a newer belt. The other one finally gave up. So now if you wanted to run stuff on this, equipment on this, you could too. You could just take and... Uh, Take this loose and run a belt. Yeah, if you use this one as a belt. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and this come off a, of a tractor. It was actually a walk behind. It was a very big. Oh my goodness! Uh, how, how many horsepower is that one? Do you that's know? That's five horse. Five horsepower. That's, it's made by the New Way Engine Company. New Way. And they, they came. That's why the, somebody put Centaur on their Elmer did when he had it. But they, they, them engines came on a Centaur. But this is just a homemade contraption, you know. It, it's got the you know the Model T conversion from a Shaw Duo, and that's what they sold them for to convert your Model T into a tractor. Well, that's interesting. Got any other machines with you today? That the only thing I got is a one. No, that ain't the Wonder Boy. It's over there, Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy. Oh, let's see what you got over here. A Wonder Boy. Yeah. Sim Simplicity made the Wonder Boy. <coughs> they. It steers with this handle, and that makes it drive. There was a riding mower, primarily. And, I don't know if this is on or off. Let me put it in low gear so we don't run nothing over. You ready, Scott? You just pull the handle and you steer it. This one's a little quieter, it's not quite as noisy. It's, well, your model was something like this, Bay. These was, they made them in like, I think it's 57 and 58. Now, did they have a mowing deck for them? Or? Yes, there was a, originally there'd have been a mower deck there. Right. And it wouldn't have had that Honda motor on it. <clears throat> so, most of uh, the beginnings of the zero turn, but kind of like, yeah, it's like a rear end, kind of like your old snapper was. Yeah, yeah. And that was the Simplicity Wonder Boy. That, that hood's off a of 575. I'm not sure if that's a 575 or not. But. Well, appreciate you appreciate showing you. everybody what you've been doing. We appreciate yeah. you keeping these old engines going for people to see in the future. You know, it's we, important. We enjoy doing it. Well, we'll probably see you again next year then. Yeah, I hope so. All right. Thank you very much. Gary Wackerhagen, and I'm from Maribel, Tennessee. And we're here last year, and we filmed filmed you last year. And filmed me last year, and, and you told uh, us these things is good for what? How many things? Oh, these four things? things: smoke, sling oil, make noise, make grown people stand out in the weather and watch them run. That's it. That's, <laughs> That's it. it. They're still doing it today. Ain't yeah, they? they're still doing it today. This one's the 1928 Jaeger, <clears throat> and it is probably born on a cement mixer. It. Uh, it's actually a Hercules engine, but they ma Hercules made somewhere around 10,000 of them for Jaeger, and Jaeger was a concrete mixing uh, entity. So they mounted these on concrete mixers, and it's a two horsepower at 500 RPM. I've got it cut down a whole lot slower. I don't. It doesn't need to be running that fast, and uh, it it sits there and percolates just right on. If people want, ever took a notice, the intake valve does not have a push rod on it. That's the intake valve. Now the exhaust valve does, but the intake valve does not. Most of all of these old engines didn't have a push rod for an intake valve. They, uh, they all worked off of the piston drawn air past 
the, the spring on the intake valve right there. It's real weak. It's, it's not very strong. And it, it goes with this one too. Right here's the intake valve on this. It's a swing check valve like the Henry Ford did. And it's just a swinging valve in there that I put a little light spring behind of it. So it would help keep it closed. And this is all plumbing parts. Except for the the piston. The piston you can see it right there. That's the piston. And I turned it out on the lathe and cut a couple of grooves in it for rings and put the rings on there. And then this is a piece of chrome molly coro seamless tubing. And they use it for uh, roll bars and, and race cars. And that's just a regular cutoff valve like you have on the outside of your house for your water hose. And with a little modification with a brass tube and a spring and a set screw that, uh, and I drilled a, uh, drilled a quarter inch hole and put a quarter inch rod in there with a, turned out a disc to use for a valve and cut a seat on that lower part right in there and then that seats against that and that's what what keeps it, you know, it'll open just like the regular exhaust valve on a car. That's the exhaust. I don't know if you got it last year or not, but this is a Model T coil and uh, just like straight off of a Model T car. Each Model T come out with four of those. So there, at one time there was millions of those things out there. That's a, <coughs> just a little old six volt uh, motorcycle battery and the off on switch right there. You can fire it up for us? No, we'll do it. Let these people see this thing running in case they didn't see the last video. This is the, I modified an oiler like on top of one of these. I modified it to use it for a gas tank. And when I raise that up, it drips gas down in there. That's just like the very first engine that Henry Ford made, with the exception of the spark plug. Now, what gets this thing from overheating? It, it, nothing. I got to cut it off when it gets warm. You cut yeah, it if off. I can't if I can't catch it like this, then I have to turn it off. Things go to warping now. Huh? Well, it seizes up eventually. It This is off a Singer sewing machine. The treadle wheel down on the on the foot, that's where the round belt went that went up to the head of the sewing machine. This is just plain steel right here. And the, uh, Did you build these parts? I, I built all these with the exception of the gears. Yeah. And I built the gears and there's a cam down in there. Let's see if we can get it up there. Let me see if I turned it off. No. That thing will light you up if you get in between it. But you see the cam right there? See it right there? Okay. All right, that cam, when it, when it turns over, that's what it does your exhaust valve. See? Uh huh. And then when it comes back up, that pin hits this right here, and that's my ignition. It fired right then. Okay, it's so just only, it's just exactly like the engine in your car. So you were telling me, I think about this last year. What, what this this is a design was made by who and when? Henry Ford in 1893. 1893. He worked in a steam shop, and he bless his heart didn't have a third grade education, but he was a, a genius when it come to figuring things out. And he made all this out of steam parts, and made his piston out of a piece of cast iron and then build all this out of just regular steel and used a flywheel just like what I did. How long have you had this model? I've had this about three three or four years now. Yeah. How long did you work on it to get it to run it? I, I tell everybody that actual construction time was probably two weeks. 
but actual thinking time was probably about two and a half months. Yeah. Because I'd I'd look at it and I'd fabricate it and look at it and fabricate it. And then if it didn't work like I wanted it to, then I'd redo it. I see what else this, you got on this is a 1926 Fairbanks Morse, and they have termed them as the dishpan engine because it doesn't have spokes. This one up here has got spokes. That one up there has spokes. But this is a dishpan engine, what they call dishpan. I don't know any advantage or disadvantage to it because all, about all the manufacturers it's not going to start <laughs> about all the manufacturers did it both ways see there's two engines right there both of them economies one of them's got a flat disc and the other one's got spokes well there's an advantage to that for some reason i don't know the advantage i've never found out by reading or find try to find out what the advantage was might be could make a lighter weight maybe if you put the spokes. Or... Well, there's a lot of mass in these flywheels, whether they're <coughs> whether they're spoke or whether they're so solid. They, they like want that. that weight in there. Then. Want the weight? That's where you get your horsepower and okay. your torque. Okay. You get your low end torque. Right. Uh, you couldn't for you, so the 1916. This is the intake valve for it. It doesn't have the push rod. Now the push rod for the exhaust is internal right here. This doesn't fire off of a spark plug. It fires off of a, what they call igniter. And that's just two points in there. And it does that to them. And when it does it, they spread apart and it makes a spark, just like a spark plug. And this is the 1927 Maytag washing machine motor. And my grandmother had one. And they smoke and make noise. <laughs> and my grandfather had to drill a hole in the wash house and pipe it outside so it didn't gas my grandma out. But that actually came off of a wash machine. Well, this one looks like it's an original shape almost, is it? Or no. Uh, when I got it, it was pretty sad. Sad, was it? You yeah. Did and good I, job on it then. I, I tore it down and completely rebuilt it. And... Uh, put new rings in it and you can get every part that you need off for these yeah the kick start that you put yeah just started like that. oh here y'all see you got your tight it hooked up right here yeah can you start that up unless there's grind some going I, it's been giving me a think it'll start today a fit. let me see if i can get up here and start it okay i didn't see what you had it hooked up to I think I need a new plug. Because I tried I think it. we filmed it last year. Yeah, I think you did. Yeah. But I got it hooked up to, this is a hand corn grinder. There was a big handle that went over on the back side uh -huh. that you crank like that. And as you get older, you work smarter. <laughs> and so I hooked it up with a jack shaft and, to slow it down. And then I grind cornmeal with it. Makes a good cornbread. Well, we're going to get over here and see the ice cream guy. Oh, yeah. Got to see him. We have done been there. Yeah. <laughs> well, good talking to you again. Good talking to you. Hope you have a good show. Thank you, sir.